Hey guys, JD here with the 2022 Kawasaki Ultra 310 LXS. And for this segment, I'll be showing you how to gap and inspect the spark plugs on your Ultra 310. I'll show you what tools we're gonna need today to do our spark plug check and gap. First, you're gonna need a 5 8 extended reach socket. You're gonna need also an extension bar like this in order to get those plugs. You're gonna need a standard gapping tool available at almost any auto parts store probably in the world. You're gonna need a tube or a bottle of anti-seize lubricant suitable for spark plug threads. And then I like to use a soft bristle brush like this just to clean off my spark plugs and extend their life. To do the job correctly, you'll also need a torque wrench like the torsion type or click type shown here. Make sure to torque each plug to 115 inch pounds or 13 Newton meters. In this image, the gap is indicated by D, the space between the center electrode A and the side electrode B. So the first step is we gotta remove these spark plug wires. Now they're in there pretty good. It's a real heavy, thick sealed boots. And you can see your plugs are down in there. Don't confuse these wires, whatever you do. Now the plugs aren't in there very tight. They don't need to be extremely tight. If you over tighten them, you're gonna damage the threads. You're gonna strip them out and you're gonna screw shit up. So once you get those plugs out, in the 310 here, these are NGK PMR 9Bs. There we go. So these plugs should be gapped between 0 0.024 and 0 0.028. So you, you're gonna want this to be right before that mark right there is 0 0.025. So really we want it to be just about right there. So what you're gonna do, and if there's a lot of videos on gapping spark plugs, but you know, we're just gonna put the plug on the gauge like that and we're gonna slide it along. And we could see it actually, this plug in particular stops right there at 0 0.024. Wanna be careful not to do any unnecessary manipulations. You can see that that plug looks nice and clean. You saw what it looked like when I pulled it out. It had a bit of an orange tinge. So now what we're going to do is we're going to apply just a bit of this anti-seize compound to the threads. It didn't look like it had any in there from the factory. So we want to make sure we get that on there. So our plug is tightened. We're going to reinstall the boot, make sure it's in there secure. And now on to the next one. So I can't, de can't demonstrate this enough because I've seen people screw these up. Do not pull this by the wire. You're going to grip it like this. If you have to put two fingers around it, go like this and pull them up. So this is going to be the same process as the last one. We're going to inspect the plug. We're going to clean it off with the soft bristle brush. We're going to apply some anti-seize and we're going to reinsert the plug. And we're going to reinstall spark plug cap. Cap is tight. On to the next one. And we're going to torque plug number three. And we're going to reinstall our spark plug boot. All right, on to our final and fourth cylinder, and then we are good to go. All right, here's our fourth boot. All right, we've got our anti-seize on the threads, and we're gonna go ahead and reinsert the plug. And finally, we're gonna torque plug number four. All right, so just to recap what we've done, we've removed each boot, We've removed each plug, we've checked the gap, we've cleaned the plugs up, and we've put some anti-seize on the threads and reinstalled them. You're gonna check all your spark plug boots one final time, and 
That's all she wrote. If you like this video, click the like button and subscribe for more Kawasaki content.